why is it every time that I take a Hoya out of the grow tent to show it to you, it has to get hurt? I don't understand. Poor little thing. Hello and welcome, my name is Miro, and if you're first time on the channel, it is mandatory that you purchase five Hoyas after watching this video. Because that's how you enter the Hoya bandwagon. Or get on it. Whatever. Today I wanted to talk about small-leaved Hoyas, and in the past I have made a video about my collection of small-leaved Hoyas, but of course, since that moment in time, my collection has, you know, it, it's, it's increased a little bit. Uh, when I say a bit, I mean a lot, and I have quite a few small-leaved Hoyas, but don't worry, I'm not going to show all of them today. Instead, what you can do, you can watch that video with my small-leaved Hoyas. I will link it somewhere above my head, because we still have not figured out what side that is on, and mirrored image is an issue, right? And also the link will be down in the description. And while I'm talking here without any pause, why don't you subscribe to the channel, because it really helps out, and give it a thumbs up, the video not the channel because you cannot give a thumbs up to the channel. I actually think that all of the Hoyas that I will show you today are Hoyas from this year so that is excellent so we can kind of see how much they have progressed. So I'm just going to kind of start with the one that I think it's probably the easiest to find and that's actually the one that I wanted to talk about a bit longer. So this is Hoya Lacunosa and this is a clone of Hoya Lacunosa that is from Durian Perangin Waterfall. This is said to be Hoya Lacunosa with the smallest leaves. And as you can see, they are definitely very, very small. I received this plant as a cutting from Betsy in July, I think, of this year, and it has grown really, really well in my Mars Hydro grow tent. I think all of these Hoyas Actually, not all of them. I think majority of these Hoyas do grow in my grow tent, but I will mention some of these that I don't think are best suited for the grow tent just because I like to keep high light in the tent and simply some of these Hoyas do not prefer that. So I will just make sure to mention that as we go, but my Hoya Lacunosa definitely likes those conditions and you can really see that she went crazy there with the aerial roots, not something that you often see on a Hoya Lacunosa that is cultivated in a home. And just for comparison, which it did not occur to me before I started recording this video, I'm gonna show you what a regular Hoya Lacunosa will look like, so give me a moment to get up. Now this is my Hoya Lacunosa SV403. So this is a clone that is supposed to have slightly darker leaves, or at least they do get darker in higher light. They also get smaller, I'm not sure if you can see there on this newer vine that it is slightly darker. We can see there is some dark edge to that margin. Let's just compare them in size. They're tangled, of course. You can see how much smaller this Hoya Lacunosa is, how much smaller the leaves are. So it really is supposed to be the one with the smallest leaves. And of course, the size of the leaves can vary a bit. Again, tangling, this was a bad idea, as always. The size of the leaves can vary a bit, and that will usually depend on the light. So the one from uh, Durian Perangin Waterfall, very, very small leaves. It has not yet bloomed, and it was a bit slower in the beginning. Now it has kind of started to grow faster, but you can see as we get far away from the light, the internodal space gets larger and the leaves get slightly bigger. It's really the most compact here on the top and that's where it gets the most light. That's why it's so compact here. Now, I wanted to show you something that I found to be very interesting and slightly confusing because this year I also got Hoya Lacunosa in May from Camilla, and she's the former president of Swedish Hoya Society. And this is Hoya Lacunosa from Lankavi Island. Now, let me just take her out from the cover pot if the roots will allow. So this one also has very small leaves and I could have sworn that they look very different. But when I looked at them today and I show this to Betsy, I don't really see that much of a difference between Lankavi Island and Durian Perangin Waterfall. I don't think I could tell them apart if I did not have a tag. So I'm not saying they're the same, but they are 
<laughs> very, very similar. I would like to hear your opinion in the comments if you have these two plants, if you have a Durian Parangin Waterfall, and if you have Lankavi Island, what do you think? And I will make sure to also include some B-roll, just really side by side, so you can compare these leaves. Tell me what you think. On the right we have Huela Cunosa from Durian Pirangin Waterfall and on the left we have Huela Cunosa from Langkawi Island. I do believe that essentially these two Hoyas are the same. Huela Cunosa from Langkawi Island has been collected by Ed Gilding and Ted Green but it has also been labeled by Epiphytica, according to my friend Rachel Collette Conroy, so I do believe that that is where the confusion has started. Now, these two plants have not flowered for me, but the size of the leaves, the leaf shape, the splash of the leaves do look identical to me, and since Durian Parangin Waterfall is on Langkawi Island, I do believe this is the same clone. There are just way too many similarities, in my opinion. The next toy that I will include, and I think, again, this has become easier to find. If you were looking for this plant two or three years ago, it was quite expensive and really not in circulation. I mean, it was in circulation, but it wasn't easy to find. And this is Hoya Species NS 12323. It used to be called Hoya Species NS 12323 Nicholsonii Microdwarf, but I think we have circled back on that. I just don't think we know for sure this is Hoya Nicholsonia because this plant has never bloomed in 10 years. It has not bloomed in any collection that we know of. I'm trying to get it out because it seems to me that the roots are out of the pot. Oh, it's actually not tragic, but it definitely will need a repot soon. For me, this is a very, very beautiful Hoya. I don't know if you can see some of the sun stress leaves there on the bottom and on this side. There are definitely some leaves that have received a bit more light. I would say that this one grows a bit faster in lower light. It has not been so fast for me in high light because it was, it was in higher light for a moment. I would say that this one has changed quite a bit since I got it. It grows very, very fast, I would say. And interestingly, it actually used to be much smaller. The leaves used to be much smaller. They kind of got bigger and that is odd to me because I can still see some sun stressing. So that means that it is in high light and somehow the leaves got bigger. But it's a very, very nice plant and it really makes for a nice, compact, small leaved Hoya. And I'm not really sure if it has made its round to the US. It has definitely made its rounds across the EU and it's just very, very beautiful. I would really recommend it. It's very easy, just like Lacunosa, nothing too difficult, nothing that, you know, will give you a lot of stress or anxiety. And I think it just branches out so well. It, if you are into small leaved Hoyas, I think this one is very unique. So going a little bit up in price and um, uncommonness, we have this Hoya Tang Chongensis. Hoya Tang Chongensis looks very similar to Hoya Serpents at least in the photos, but I swear when you get it and when you have Hoya Serpents next to it, this is a much, much prettier Hoya. I, as you know, was not really a fan of Hoya Serpents because it gives me a lot of headaches, but this one actually kind of withstands the summer a little bit better. It's not going to grow, at least it did not grow so much for me during the summer, but it definitely did not behave like Hoya Serpents. Hoya Serpents will sometimes yellow, will drop leaves, you'll have to cut it back. At least for me, it's a big drama. This one wasn't, this one was just a bit slower and now it is really picking up. I still think this Hoya is something that prefers cooler temperatures, but I don't think it's as finicky as Hoya Serpents and it's certainly more beautiful. And you will see again what I mean when I say it kind of looks like Serpents, but prettier. And that's because I think it has also this splash. Let me just try to bring it closer to you. Hopefully that is focusing and I hope that is visible, but it has some really, really nice splashing going for it. And generally for me, the shape of the leaf and the dimples, they are much more attractive than Hoya Serpents. Hoya Serpents has maybe a more gentler look but this one is more interesting to me. And another thing that I noticed is Hoya Serpents can be sometimes very sensitive when you kind of, you know, touch it. It can drop the leaves. It's very easy to kind of knock a leaf off. This one is definitely different. And I got this in April from Hoya Passion. It really progressed quite a lot and it's 
kind of becoming a bit unstoppable. And the secret to that is really make sure that it is moist. This, ooh, oh wow. Excuse you. Where did you, where are you going with the roots? No, 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 no. You're supposed to stay in that small pot forever because you're cute in that. This is in cocoa peat and perlite. There is nothing else here, just cocoa peat and perlite. It's in self-watering pot and I make sure that it is always moist. I have tried growing my Hoya Serpents in a Barky mix, a total failure. Do not do it. I don't recommend it unless you want to water every single day. I tried it in Ceramis, which is kind of like clay. It's very popular in, in Germany. It's kind of this very small pieces of clay and that was okay. It was especially good for rooting it, but again, it kind of can also dry out. It was in Lekka and it actually was growing really well in Lekka, my Hoya Serpents, but then I just had issues with mealybugs and I decided to not grow in Lekka anyways anymore, unrelated to mealybugs. And then I saved some cuttings and I put it in cocoa peat and perlite. And I can tell you that I'm, I think I'm most satisfied with cocoa peat and perlite for these plants in self-watering pots. This is constantly moist, except for now. Now it's a bit on the drier side. It's still moist for a Hoya, but a bit on the drier side. So these need to be watered actually. But when it comes to growing Hoya Serpents and Hoya Teng Chungensis, I really recommend you to keep them in self-watering. I have not tried this in pond. I know a lot of people and me myself, you know, included, we grow Hoyas in pond, but I don't think that this one would like it. Actually, this was in pond. This was in pond in the beginning and it did not grow very fast. It actually started to take off when I moved it to cocoa peat and perlite. So I would just recommend that. Again, you can try out pond. It's your plant. You can do whatever you want with your plant, but this is just some of my observations. It really likes to be moist and it again if you can keep it away from the um, warmth that would be the best if you can get your hands on it I think you should I don't think it's very popular I think kind of people were over it with Hoya Serpents they got Hoya Serpents and they just you know either loved it or hated it because she can really be finicky. And I think maybe it left a bad taste in people's mouths when it comes to Hoyas like these. The next small leaved Hoya, Hoya curry is something that became very popular in 2022. And when it started to show up, it was quite expensive. The prices were kind of crazy there for a moment, but I think very quickly people figured out this is a Hoya that grows really fast. It's still not going to be in Lacunosa territory, but it's not going to be very expensive either, at least, again, not compared to the to what the prices were in the beginning. And we are just going to have a difficult time showing this, but I'm gonna try my best. And if you remember, this Hoya did not arrive well to me. You can see a bit of the foliage there. She was shipped to me in summer, and actually the package was, I think, lost for a moment. It took forever to arrive and unfortunately the temperatures changed. So I'm not really sure if you can see, but they it, it has kind of these, I would say heart-shaped leaves almost. And the middle vein is a bit more pronounced, but it's a very pretty Hoya. And why I find it so special is because what these leaves feel like. They are very soft. I don't really know how to describe them. I, in the past, I would say it kind of reminds me of philodendron micans, the way these leaves feel, but not even like that. The color of the leaves is also very nice. It's a mix between deep green and maybe a bit of bronze, especially on the new growth, they will kind of be bronze. It's super, super pretty Hoya. The flower is also very pretty. Again, I am probably doing a terrible job of showing this to you, but... That's, you know, I don't really want to spill all of my pawn as well. Ooh, that's kind of like my eyes. Excellent, I love this. It's a Hoya that I don't think it's very difficult to care for. Again, maybe the shipping is a bit challenging, but I also heard some people had good experience with the shipping of this plant. So maybe it was just my experience, but when it recovers, it really starts to grow faster and this one is really doing well. I think I need to retrellis it a bit. I would like her to fill out this trellis so I might more tightly wrap it around this so the space isn't so 
you know, huge. But again, another hood that I recommend, it's really not that difficult. It looks like it should be difficult, but it's not. And it's a very fast grower, at least in my grow tent, that's where it grows. It seems to like the highlight. I know that it can have bigger leaves in, in lower light, but uh, for me, they have always stayed kind of the same. And I don't really even see the signs of sun stressing, so I don't think it's too much light at all. And I really like this, uh, this size of the leaves, so I'm not moving it her to lower light. It's growing really fast, it's growing really well, and I just love it. And I hope that it blooms soon because, as I said, the flowers are very, very pretty. The last plant on this list is something that I got also in July of 2022. And when I wanted to initially record this video, this plant looked a little bit better. But then it lost a couple of leaves. I'm just seeing that it lost another one. So not a great sign. I'm not really sure why. Is it the warmth? Is it something else. I think I need to spray her for mites. This is the famous, or maybe infamous at this point, Hoya microphylla. This is currently Hoya with the smallest leaves that is known to us, and it is indeed very tiny. So I'm gonna try my best to show it to you. And if you have seen this plant when it arrived to me, you will know that this plant really, really grew <laughs> a lot since when I got it. It's, again, not crazy fast, but considering it's a small leaf toy, we can say that it more than doubled in size, so maybe it is crazy fast. It is a very finicky Hoya, in my opinion, at least in the beginning. I, I still consider that I'm still in the beginning of, of the journey with this plant. I did read from my friend Emily, I think she made a post on her Instagram, Hoya Maniac, that this plant does get easier with the time, but in the beginning that she can really be challenging. And listen, we have been with her for six months at this point, and she did become easier, but now she's losing some of the leaves on this vine. I don't know if you will even be able to see this thread here. That's a vine that had some leaves and they just yellowed. So I think maybe I need to spray her for mites. I don't really see the thing is, I'm not even seeing any damage. I don't even know how to diagnose if this has mites or not, because it's so tiny. But it's not a super common Hoya to find. I would say among all of these, this is the most uncommon one. I'm not gonna go as far to say this is the you know rarest Hoya in my collection, but it's definitely not offered very much. And again, I don't know if a lot of people will be willing to even sell this because um, it's not easy to ship. Interestingly, it arrived quite well with the shipping. It was shipped with this Hoya Micro Dwarf and actually it arrived to me at the same time as Hoya Kari. So these were in the same package. So you can kind of see how they look now. Quite a lot of difference, right? It's also a Hoya that does not produce a lot of roots. I do have like good roots going here. I will show it to you. Can we see? I don't know if you can see that root going there. So yeah, that's I think the extent of the roots. It actually fell out of the pot several weeks ago and I'm quite surprised to see that it, it is okay because I knocked it over and it completely was out of the pot. This Hoya does not, does not love highlight. I had it in slightly higher light and by no stretch of imagination it's highlight and she absolutely didn't like it. The leaves became almost black to me, it seems almost black to me. It's in reality, I think when I take them to light, it's kind of, you know, dark green with a bit of sun stressing with a bit of red but it does not look pretty. And they also get smaller, so smaller than what they already are. When it comes to watering, I don't think you want to dry this out. I think, you know, this isn't self-watering again, and maybe it would do better in cocoa peat or even in moss. I think maybe now it will start to grow faster because we have roots going towards the bottom of this pot, but I really just make sure never to dry this Hoya out. E even though I'm terrible with watering, I make sure that this one is constantly moist. And this one does make very nice flowers. They are much bigger than the leaves, which is kind of interesting contrast in my opinion, but it is just a super unique Hoya. Out of all of these, this is the one that is the most unique. And I mean, it, there is something special knowing that you have in your collection a Hoya with the smallest leaves, and you know, 
in the species. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed seeing all of these really miniature leaved Hoyas. Let me know which one of these is your favorite, and if you have any small leaved Hoya that you think I should add to my collection, I would like to know. There are at least two small leaved Hoyas that I would like to add to my collection, and they have been in my 2023 rare Hoya wish list. I think I named that video like that. Again, somewhere above me you will see the link. If you haven't seen that video, you can watch that and, you know, find out what are other two small leaf hoys that are very uncommon that I would like to get my hands on this year. If you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you're not subscribed to the channel, honestly, how many times? How many times? You must. You must. And, you know, eat lots of cake and don't worry too much advice sound advice from me goodbye i would like to take some time to thank my patrons a massive shout out to my five dollar patrons my three anonymous patrons alex von siebenthal Anne margaret moen angela bernard angela parish and c ashley hoyas beth gibson betsy begonia danub daniels daria kaminska diane sikorsky farah gina geise go green tropical houseplant heather hoya heather yana griffin jessica chio kayla vavra kelly Koo, kelso kristen sherwood leplan de steph mandy milliken mars b martin Tina Alif Perday, Marty Miller, Melissa Walker, Nicole Ferranti, Mirka Grun Roo, Snaily Yang, Nicole Moreau, Nicole and Caleb of Schleif Tropicals, Nita Macy, PJ, Robin L. Jennings, Sherry Kumar, Stephanie H2O, Stephanie Zeely May, Sybil Williams, Tanya, Tessa Martins, The Swedish Hoya Noob, TJWO, Wendy, Wendy Foreman, Wendy Rossman, and Zlokov Nipponi. Also, a big thank you to my $3 patrons, Angelina Farnan, Anne Margaret, Anna K, Brenna B, Brenna Phillips, Kelon, Christina Greengrass, Claudia L, Fluffy Blue Sheep, Jerry's Garden, Lisa Helling, Morgan Kennedy, Nella, Nerdy Kathy, Plant Druid, Plantolania, Ringlob, and Tang Watana Sriakul. And a thank you to my $1 patrons, Brandon Pacheco, Kari, Carrie, Constance, Jacinta, Jolie Sullivan, Lauren M, Lori Ann Subramaniam, Luzman Fernandez, Neely Spicer, Olivia Chen Muller, and Paula Plans. Thank you so much for incredible support. I hope that you enjoyed seeing some of the Hoyas with the smallest sleeves in my collection. Aren't they adorable? Well, at least I think so. Have a wonderful weekend, and I will see you soon.